So let's look at installing uh, the vCenter server appliance. In order to install the vCenter server appliance, you will need to download the uh, vCenter server appliance ISO file. You can download that from the VMware uh, website, the web portal, my VMware web portal. Once you've downloaded the ISO file, you will then need to mount the ISO file. So in my case, I've saved it to my desktop. I'll select mount on my Windows 10 desktop. And then from there, I'm going to go into the uh, VCSA UI installer. And as you can see, you've got a Linux installer, a Mac installer, and a Windows installer. I'll click on the Windows, and then scroll down and look for the installer file, which is just here. There's the installer application. Double click on the installer application, which should open the installation wizard. So you've got a number of options here. You can install, upgrade if you've got an older version. You can also migrate uh, from an existing Windows vCenter server and converge it. Uh, converge that with the with a newer one or you can restore from previous backup in our case we are going to install <coughs> and then we are just going to click on next so it's given us the steps that we are going to go through so it's the eight steps that we're going to go through we're going to deploy our vCenter server so let's click on next we're going to accept the license agreement click on next it's asking me which host I need. I would like to deploy my uh, vCenter server on. So which ESXi host is this vCenter server going to live on? I'm going to use ESXi1, so I'll put in my ESXi1's uh, fully qualified domain name. So esxi1.ajlabs.com. So that's my ESXi1. And I will then put in my root password for my ESXi host. So root and then the password. There we go. So this is to allow this vCenter server to be deployed to my ESXi host. So if I just quickly show you my ESXi host that it's going to be deployed on, it's this ESXi host here, as you can see. I've currently got one virtual machine on there. Um, it's got enough memory to be able to deploy this server. And as this is a lab, we're, we're not going to re really use too much of the resources of the, of the ESXi hosts. So let's go back to our vCenter server wizard. I'll click on next. It is now giving me the certificate from my ESXi host, asking me if I trust it. I'll say yes. It's asking me to give the appliance a name. So we're going to call mine vCSA, so, and then I'll just put in a root password for my vCenter server appliance. So you could create your own password for your vCenter server appliance. Once you do that, if you want to see the password complexity requirements, you just hover over the I icon here, and that will tell you what the requirements are for your password. Make sure your password matches these requirements. And then once you once you've done, just click on next. It's now asking us the type of uh, deployment size. As we've got a very small lab, we are going to stick with the tiny deployment size. The tiny deployment allows you to have two virtual CPUs, um, 12 gig of memory, 415 gig of storage. You can manage up to 10 hosts and 100 virtual machines. We're not going to go anywhere close to that, so we are just going to stick with the tiny deployment. If you've got the resources, you can increase and choose one of the other ones by just dropping the menu, selecting the drop-down menu, and then selecting the deployment that you prefer. In a lab environment, usually you'd want to stick with tiny or small. We'd click on next. And then it's asking me where I want to store my vCenter server. If I go back to my ESXi host just behind me here, as you can see under storage, I've got one storage attached. And that's because I attached a LUN, which is uh, 200 gig. And that is attached to my, uh, my server, so my VM server here. DC1, this has got a 200 gig disk attached to it. And that gig is being used, sorry, that, that disk is being used as uh, a storage device where I'm using for to store my virtual machines. So it's connected through iSCSI, which we'll see how to do later on. I'll just minimize this. And I'll choose my LUN, which is on my Windows server. I'll select next. Oh, before I select next, I'm going to enable thin disk mode. So thin disk mode allows you to gradually expand 
or increase this, uh, the amount of space used on the disk. So I'm going to use that. I'll click on next. And now it's asking me about the virtual network that I, or the network configuration and the network uh, that I want my VM to connect to. As you can see in my one, I'm going to keep it under the VM network. I've set up a few networks and we'll, we'll go through how to set up virtual networks later on. But I'm going to stick with the VM network that I've got here. It's going to be IPv4. The IP address assignment is going to be static. It's asking me for a FQDN uh, for my vCenter server. I already have one which I've created on my DNS server, which is my uh, my Windows server that I showed you before. So I'm going to just call this vcsa.ajlabs.com. Oh, that is going to be the uh, fully qualified domain name. IP address is 192.168. Actually, let's confirm the IP address. So if we go back to our Windows server, DC1, let's log into this. So you can just quickly see how I've got it set up in DNS. So here we are, I'm in my DNS uh, manager. And as you can see, VCSA has an IP address. I've already set up an IP address for it of 192.168.220.133. So if we go back to our wizard, 192.168.220. Dot one three three. The subnet mask is a twenty-four bit subnet mask, so it's a twenty-four bit. I'll say two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. We could also just use the slash twenty or the twenty-four. We could just put twenty-four in there, and that should that would be able to do the same thing. The default gateway. Just double check on my server again. So if we go to here, just make sure we've got. A correct default gateway settings. Let's bring this window up a bit. And our default gateway, let's have a look. Go down to our 192 network. And that's our default gateway, 192.168.220.3. So I'll put that in there. So 192.168.220.3. Just make sure you have all of this information to hand for yourself because you won't be able to continue without this information. And then the DNS server is 192.168.220.130. Now that's my domain controller on my DNS server, as well as my DHCP server. That's the server that I just showed you there. Um, keep the rest as default, HTTP on port 80, HTTPS on port 443, and we'll click on next. And then we get a summary page and it's saying we are ready to complete stage one. So there are two stages to this process. We are now almost completing stage one. We're going to click on finish. So as you can see, it's now deploying the vCenter server to our ESXi host. So it's appeared vCSA on our ESXi host, and that is now being deployed. One thing is if you do have problems deploying the vCenter server when you use your ESXi host's fully qualified domain name, uh, then use the IP address instead. So where we put the, when it was asking us for the ESXi name and we use the uh, we typed in ESXA, esxi1.ajlabs.com. Instead of typing the ESXi host's name, you can also use the IP address if you do come across any errors. So as you can see, it's on 8% at the moment. Once that completes, we will carry on uh, with stage two of the deployment. There we are, that's all complete. So we have made it through the deployment stage one of the vCenter server. Now we're going to continue to uh, stage two. So let's click on continue. And we'll just let the installer launch again. So at this stage, uh, we are going to go through some configuration. So let's click on next. Time synchronization. I'm just going to leave it to sync with my ESXi host. I can choose an NTP server. 
if I wanted to, and then I can type in my domain controller, which is DC1, or I can type in the IP address of it. But in my case, I'm just going to let it sync with my ESXi host. SSH, I'm going to keep that as disabled for now, but I, you can enable SSH at this stage. So if you need to access your vCenter server appliance through SSH, uh, you can do that here. Let's just click on next. So we need to create a single sign on domain. Now, be very careful with this part because it's quite confusing. This is not your Active Directory domain. We need to create a domain that's specific to our vSphere environment. So in our case, we're going to call it vSphere.local. So as you can probably see the fainted text right there, it says vSphere.local. So we're just going to keep it at that, vSphere.local. And the administrator name for the single sign-on domain is going to be administrator. And we're going to create a password for it. If we had an existing single sign-on domain, then we would be able to join our vCenter server to it by selecting this option. But in our case, we don't. So this is a new single sign-on domain. And again, very important to differentiate between this and your Active Directory domain and not to get the two confused. So let's click on Next. It's asking us if we want to join VMware's Customer uh, Improvement Program. We'll say no for now and click on Next. It has given me a summary of the settings for my single sign-on and my vCenter server. As you can see, the fully qualified domain name is vcsa.ajlabs.com. And that's the DNS name for the server, details of it, the IP addresses and so forth. And the domain that it's on is vSphere.local. So notice it's not vSphere.ajlabs. So this is specific to our vSphere environment. So we're going to click on Finish. You will not be able to pause or stop the installation from completing once it's started. Click OK to continue or cancel to stop the, ins to stop the install. We are going to click on OK because we're very happy that what we've done is absolutely correct. So click on OK. And we will let that process complete. Excellent. So stage two is now complete. We have finally made it through both stages of installing our vCenter server appliance. As you can see, you have successfully set up this vCenter server. Now, in order to start uh, configuring the server, we can click on this link here, which will take us to our server's web page or web interface. So if we click on this link here, As you can see, it's taken us to vcsa.ajlabs.com, so our fully qualified domain name is working. We'll click on Advanced because it's just giving us a warning about the certificate. We'll say Proceed. And then here we are in our vSphere client. We're going to click on Launch vSphere client. And that'll just take a moment as that may still be doing some setting up in the background. We're at the login page and we need to log in with our administrator account for, for our vSphere uh, domain. So it's going to be administrator at vSphere.local. Okay, and then we're going to type in the password that we created during the setup and we are going to log in. And as you can see, it's logging us in. It's just taking a moment. And sometimes this initial logging can take a moment, so do be patient with it. Don't try and rush and refresh the page or anything like that. Just let it do what it's doing, give it some time, and then eventually it should take us to the login screen. There we are, that's just logging us in. And as you can see, it's just presenting us, still loading. It's a little bit slow. But it is a lab, so as I said, do bear with it. It's just loading our uh, vSphere environment. And there we are. So we've logged in. It's telling us we are 
we've exhausted this, uh, the CPU. We may need to give this additional resources. I'll just acknowledge this for now and reset it to green. It's probably the reason why it's running a little bit slow because it's lacking on resources, but that's not a problem. Again, this is a virtual uh, lab environment. And if we go to our, uh, if we go back to, I'll just minimize this and take us to our host, our ESXi host. Log into the host uh, again, just to take a look at the virtual machines. And as you can see, we've got VCSA, it's running. And in fact, we can launch it from here as well. We can click on launch and it opens our pop-up window and we can manage it from here. So we can log into the, uh, the actual appliance from here, but that's not how we'd normally manage it. We normally log in. We normally log in through the uh, vSphere client, uh, vSphere web client. So let's go back to our vSphere web client. And that's it. As you can see, I've got some updates available. We'll talk about updates in the upcoming videos or in the upcoming lessons. Uh, once you've logged in, one of the first things you want to do is obviously manage your licensing, get your uh, vCenter server activated. And also, we're going to add our host at the moment. We don't have any we don't have a data center, we don't have any clusters, we don't have anything here at the moment, so it's blank. So hopefully in the next lesson, uh, we'll be looking at some of that stuff, uh, some of those things there. Uh, hopefully you've found this video beneficial. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.